Well, yeah, I appreciate you guys asking me to do this. It's only been 10 years of me being your biggest fan and you asked me to do something <laughs> with you guys. But I was going to say, I, I was going to start this whole thing off by saying, dude, it's so cool that you reached out to us about doing this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's funny is like, I certainly would have, like if you had done this and I saw like guns doing it, I'd be like, what the fuck? How could you not ask me first? <laughs> uh, how are you guys doing? How's, how's everything feeling with sticky and the rollout of that? Great. Pumped. Um, feel excited to have a video and have it all out there. It's a, uh, you know, we've, we've had the song done for so long now that it just, it feels so good to have, have people like listening to it and just to like be able to go to Spotify and like hit, yeah. hit, hit play and see. Not, not a Dropbox link every single time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you guys like, I mean, I'm sure every band is the same, but with us, it's you go through this phase of writing a song and being really excited about it. And then a month later you record it and you're like reinvigorated. You're like, holy shit, this is a cool song. And then a year later, you've been listening to it for a year and you're like, is this song good? And then it takes that fan reaction to be like, oh, this song is still good. Do you, yeah. do you have that same kind of thing? Definitely. You don't want to, at least for me, I, I try not to listen to it. You know, like yeah. it, once it's done and then that waiting game happens between uh, it being done and then releasing it to the world. Um, I just try not to listen to it. But the, the fortunate thing is, is like you're saying, people have responded well, and then um, I still like the song. Like I yep. still enjoy it. So it, it's, yeah, it's kind of that double, uh, double feel good stuff where like yeah. I still am proud of it, and now people are reacting well to it. So it's been not, it's been awesome. It's a great feeling. It's the worst thing in the world. Like the day before the record, the song comes out and you're like, fuck, maybe it's not good. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we're wrong, but yeah. Uh, did the, we'll get to April 7 or, and all that, but did the pandemic affect the scheduling of this whole thing? Or, I mean, you guys released, you were okay. What in 2009, like early 2019, right? March. Yep. Yeah. And so I'm, you're probably about due for a new record anyway, but was it shifted because obviously Sad Summer and all that got moved and you guys had more time or did it affect the process of recording at all? Like as far as, you know, this record, you guys are kind of the marquee producers on it. It's, you know, I know with Sticky was the main John and then uh, Goldstein. And that's kind of, is that a first for you guys as far as you guys being the producers, you guys doing, I think John, you use the term like heavy lifting and, um, that type of thing and was that a product of well we can't fly around to different studios and have these producers work with us so we might as well just kind of do the bulk ourselves yeah i think you know in the past we've had we've taken stabs at it but they haven't been it hasn't felt like as critical um or like as sort of pressure packed because everything that we've recorded has either been like an acoustic version of something or right. you know some ep that like a smaller amount of people are probably going to hear so this time around it was um i don't think i don't think we really like gave ourselves enough time to panic about it i think we just you know we, we had confidence because i think we felt so good about the songs and i think that came from like you said working with a couple different people, um, Andrew and, and then Colby working with him again yep. um, and having the confidence in having that unbiased ear being a part of it and saying like, uh, you know, scrap this bridge, do this, do that, you know, helping with the pre-production side of things. And then us really focusing on making the songs, you know, as, as good as they could be and then making them sound as great as as possible so yeah that's a thing that i you know and i've you guys were gracious enough to give me um a little advance of the record and i won't go into it too much but it's so so fucking good and it is cohesive um yet every song kind of brings you to another place like i, I noticed while listening to it for the past 48 hours like you kind of it forces you to pay attention because song one into song two into song three to song four like each thing it just it just draws you in a little bit you can't get complacent because each song has something a little bit different and a little bit interesting and i wonder if you know you guys have been a band this is what your eighth studio record yep. yeah i think and so you've been a band pretty much as long as i've been in my band and do you feel because of that you're allowed kind of this creative license because by now the fans they know your voice john 
Pat, they know the way that you interact with, with Garrett and, and Jared and Kennedy do their like little rhythmic hooks. Do you feel that you can try these new things and these new outlets because as soon as you start singing on the verse, the fans are like, okay, we're still here, we're safe. Whereas if you were on record two, people would be like, wait, what's happening here? But yeah. something about this record, and there's just a confidence of like, we can try things and it's going to work because people know we're the main by now. Well, yeah. I think it, 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 it's kind of the same for, I would say for All Time Low and for the main is that um, we've been so fortunate to have these devout groups of people that allow us to venture into realms unknown for our bands. And, you know, f for our band, it's like, you think back to into your arms to then misery to uh you know something like bad behavior into you know and and when you really think about uh, about the sound it's very kind of manic and and mm -hmm. it, it, in a great way because we're allowed to be that way and and yes. people afford us the opportunity and if you think about all time low you go from dear maria to something like Dirty Laundry to Monsters to Once in a Lifetime. And those are all completely all across the board, yeah. you know, very different from one another. And I, I think just the fact that we're allowed to do it, um, you know, you definitely don't want to, to exploit that idea. You Correct. definitely don't want to take it too far. But you also, like you said, this being our eighth album and uh, you know, almost 15 years into it, you, you certainly have to, uh, I guess, satiate that part, you know, fill that, that need for more, you know, in your own, in your own heart, in your own dynamic and, and yeah. hope that people enjoy it, you know? Yeah. And the, um, the thing that I think is interesting that maybe like the, the fans of bands, maybe, don't pick up on all that much is like how much of an influence they do have on like what kind of albums bands make. Right. So it isn't something where we're thinking about, like we need something that they're, that they're going to, they're, they're going to like, and we're going to make a record that, that we hate, you know, to, to make the fans happy. But it's like when your fans get behind a song, like, like monsters, when you guys take a huge chance, I mean, that that yeah. that song compared to something off the first couple of records is is a different band you know yeah and then sure. when 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 that works then now when you go forward you guys are free to do whatever you want yep. because the new door is open because yeah. they they got got behind it and like that is such a major thing that i don't i don't think like people quite understand you know it's so true yeah i always like to think of it like you know, when we wrote, uh, or whatever, Can't Stop for you guys and for us, So Wrong It's Right, we were allowed to play in a tiny box. You know what I mean? We were mm -hmm. a pop punk band or a power pop band, whatever they were calling it back then. And then the next record, you try some more chances and the fan base still likes it. So that sandbox gets a little bit bigger and bigger. And now by eight, record eight for you guys, like you realize, okay, look, we're not gonna go out of this sandbox. We're gonna still gonna play within here, but we're gonna take some chances, track whatever, might be a little bit out of left field. and. Yeah, the, when I was listening to the record, I just kind of, the way I kept thinking to myself is like, and this is going to really put some uh, smoke up your ass here, is that it's like a greatest hits of the main, because there are elements of all of your previous records in some of the songs. I can hear Lovely, I can hear Pioneer, I can hear Can't Stop in some, and then there's the greatest hits of today, of 2021 main, and the whole record is just a unit, just fucking works, so really well done. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So how was it going back to April 7th here, going back to Colby, um, you know, obviously with lovely, what is he pioneer American candy and lovely. Yep. And then you go to Squire for you are okay. And then you say, Colby, do you want to do a song or how did that whole thing come about? Yeah, we, we asked him the, the initial part of, of, of working with him is we just asked him, do you want to come, come out to Arizona for a couple of days and just mess around? Um, and that's where April 7th came from. And that's where, um, if your light goes out came from, and that's where, uh, anxiety in real time, yeah. um, definitely different than what Colby has yep. gravitated towards in, in our band, um, in the, in the past, but that was the first one that we did. Um, 
And that was kind of like, oh shit, maybe there's a new thing that, that what we can do. And then April 7th was the, the next one. I feel like with the tracks that Colby um, helped with, it, it, like Pat said, it was very outside of his normal comfort zone. He's very overtly into like the blatant big pop hook yeah. chorus stuff and these lived in a world that were just um emotional sounding riffs like not emotional in the emo sense but like they evoked an emotion straight off the rip that like yes. that just they stuck around for so long i think that's what we just accepted on this record is just like if it feels good how it don't try to force it you know, somewhere it might not to go. So, and one thing I was going to say about the record as a whole, but April 7th is a great example of it is um, your, your songwriting. And this is such a tricky word in our industry is to use the word mature because it often means like not as hooky or like you smoke too <laughs> much weed. Old. It's just all weird. Yeah. <laughs> but you can tell songwriting has matured because you're not relying on these production or songwriting tricks. When like the chorus hits, it's not like a, you know what I mean? Like a big yeah, yeah. hit and like everything, the distortion cranks up. I mean, your verses are pretty down and very acoustic driven, very smashing pumpkin sounding. Um, and then the chorus hits and there's no like big diamond distortion chords. It kind of just like the songwriting and the m melody tells you it's a chorus. There's no other obvious hit on the head of like, hey, dummy, this is the chorus. But somehow, you know, is that just a mature songwriting thing? You've been doing it now that you're 55 years old, you've been doing it so long or what? <laughs> I think we just, um, we, we were, I think we referenced back to Can't Stop on this record. And we said, if you looked at the Pro Tools sessions from Can't Stop, you would see like probably 260 <laughs> tracks on like, I must be dreaming where it's like, dude, you, you absolutely don't need that excess. And yeah. I think, yeah, a huge point of emphasis was like, anything that's in there needs to have a purpose. It needs to serve the song in its, its highest form. Um, and I think that we were really conscientious about that. Um, we used a lot of synthetic elements. So like a lot of synthesizers, we used this little Juno and it emulated like a couple different keyboards and, and Garrett was huge on, on sort of, uh, that sort of influence side of things where this, I guess April 7th specifically sounds very uh, like a dark sort of cure kind of vibe. Drive um, soundtrack a little bit like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were really like in the verses, we really wanted to, to, to do that like Silver Sun pickups thing where yes. it's, you know, very rhythmic acoustic. Um, yeah, so I, I think, I guess getting back to a, p a point is just the idea that we didn't want to to cloud the 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 song with so many tracks that it was hard to decipher parts so yeah, yeah. and the, you know pat i think you and i are very similar musicians in that we play to serve the vocal melody you know what i mean there's a lot yeah. of drummers out there that are fucking fantastic but it's tough to grasp the melody or the beat because there's just so much happening i mean my favorite drummer the reason i started playing drums is travis barker but as a musician of 20 some years, it's hard for me to jump up and down sometimes when he's playing because I'm like, what the <laughs> hell's happening? But the way, yeah, the way everything kind of complements to say, we're going to serve the melody. And, you know, to John's point of the synths, it's such a nice texture as opposed to a lead, which I think is, you know, perfect for a band like yours or ours, where they just kind of create a nice bed of which you can like sing on top of, you know what I mean? And that's a, that's a great little tool you guys have. You were the one that, that, talked about it in terms of like uh once you once you come up with sort of a formula on how to write a song or how you're going to approach writing a song you can't really go back and like unthink that or unlearn that and that's Correct. that's been really tough especially on the last the last the last two records like this one and you're okay it's really hard to sometimes get out of your way of like you know verse pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus out, you know? Uh, yeah. And I think like on April 7th, it's kind of a weird, uh, you know, weird formula. Again, going back to working with Colby, it's like, 
it reminds me of the 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 taxi taxi that's uh, exactly what i was gonna say and 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 thinking about it in terms of like but it doesn't really make sense like you can't a b a b it but it's okay like again with the if it feels natural and it feels good just allow it and it's very difficult as a person that's been in a band for as long as we have to take yourself out and get that bird's eye view of like no this product how is this whole product feeling not yeah. this part um, yeah. but yeah it's it's a very good point that and i i said the same thing to my friend is that it reminds me of taxi in that sense um john when you were going into with colby imagine if i was like hey what do you write first the music or the lyrics like if that was the interview style this was, <laughs> was my least favorite question ever but did you have an idea of this song whether it is lyrically or did the band have an idea for the song musically that said this should be a colby song or from scratch with colby um this one like Pat mm. said, we had a couple days so of just me and, and, and Colby and I. Um, yep. And so we honestly were just in our old studio, um, just kind of like throwing everything against the wall. Like we'd both sit down at a, a guitar and we'd start re recording. And then if something cool came out of it, cool. If, if nothing happened, nothing happened. And over the course of those couple days, uh, April 7th, if you like, goes out and uh, anxiety kind of were born out of those that that batch of days. And, and it was kind of like it. And this is no knock on Colby, but Colby and I see we don't necessarily see eye to eye on everything um, lyrically like Which we can good, get. Right? We, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and he's helped me balance like what what he says and his nice way of saying things is uh, stop being so cryptic. And, and that's his nice way of saying like, just talk about shit that everybody feels and, don't and be a knows. Poet, yeah. yeah. Don't be a poet. <laughs> and it's really hard because a lot of things that I do love are, are, you know, like I love North star and I love third eye blind. And I love these uh, lyricists that don't necessarily always give the cut and dry, uh, I love love, here's love, you know, right. it's, or, you know, even like Ben Gibbard or Tom Petty or any of these yep. lyricists that like take these ideas that are completely relatable and felt by all, but spoken and sung in ways that only they could come up with. And, um, you know, April 7th specifically lived in a world of just the guitar riff and uh melody no words then i wrote the chorus and once i start kind of putting words to things the picture becomes more clear and i can start to actually develop what i'm trying to say and and kind of apply it to whatever i'm feeling and going throughout the time so it's uh yeah it's interesting yeah it's it's a tough i think you know you do it very well i think alex does it really well and i always compliment him in that there's a balance of you're, if you chew on the nose, yeah, it's very, people can like latch on and be like, oh, I get this. If you're too out there and too uh, kind of just, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you, it just feels too try hard. People It'd are going to, some people, yeah. some people will love it. And some people will be like, I can't, I, someone like me, I couldn't listen to it. But there's a great balance where you say what you want to say, but you do it to use your word crypt cryptically enough that there is a universal appeal because people might not be relating to it in the way that you wrote it, but because of the way it's written they're there, it's adaptable. You know what I mean? And, and they can accept it and feel it and be like, Oh, I can go through this. That date means nothing to me, but these lyrics do. Yeah. And I think it's like you cool. said, I, I think having, um, having the ability to sing it, you know, like having Alex's voice sing his yep. lyrics that makes it believable right there. Yeah. Very and, true. And I think there is a fine line, but I think, we're probably mostly in our own heads about it. Like, I think we could probably get away with, I mean, like Prada is what she wears. Like I've never, I, I don't, I didn't know a girl at the time wearing Prada. I just oh. said it, you know, it's yeah. like, she loves prints. Like, I don't know, like <laughs> these, th these things are just made up things at the time, but they, they were sung in a way that felt believable. And I think that- So lyrically going back to April 7th, can you let us in on some of that, John? It's, it's you know, again, it's something that I lyric, not the date, but the lyrics I can relate to and I can use them, but 
I don't know if I want to use them happily or sadly. And it just, it kind of evokes emotion and I don't really know where to place it. So can you let us in on your brain a little bit there? Yeah. I mean, obviously without giving exactly what I was going for, because I think there is such a special thing that happens when you listen to a song and you can apply moments of your life or your exact life in that moment in time yeah. to those lyrics. And, and I've always thought about this and, and actually Ben Gibbard, who I mentioned earlier, and we'll just call him Ben. VG uh, is what we do yeah. in the industry. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he had written about why he doesn't really explain or go into too much depth about his lyrics. And he's basically saying like, well, how much of a letdown would it be if you learned that one of your favorite Death Cab, Cab songs was about a cat, you know, or, or a bird that, you know, comes and rests on my, my windowsill every morning? Yep. You know, like, I guess for this song specifically, it's a bit more obvious as to what I'm talking about. Um, but in, in general, I wanted to, to write about the idea of, of feeling um, feeling an emotion for the first time over and over and over again and the idea that you're seeing this person and every time you see them it's like you're seeing them for the very first time and and that can apply to not only just like seeing a person but like especially for me I've been trying to think about um songs specifically and and hearing your favorite song for the very first time and you're never going to get that back. You're never going to get that feeling back, but somehow, some way, like when I put on my favorite songs, I can still feel oh, yeah. that same feeling. And it's not like I'm hearing it for the first time, but I'm feeling those same feelings. And I think that that's such a special thing about music. And um, this song specifically is about feeling those same feelings for the first time over and over and over again. So yeah, that's that's exactly what you know what it felt like to listen to and and what the lyrics made me feel. So um, it is such a banger. It's such a good one. What Thank was you. the? It, uh, we're about to I guess see the video for it, which you have not let me in on yet. So I have no idea. Is there anything you want to like tease about that before it goes on? Or <laughs> I mean, Pat, you kind of developed the whole concept for it. Yeah. Um... I will say, I guess, without giving away too too much, because you you, you are ab ab about yeah. to watch it. Um, I will say, Guadalupe Bustos um, was the director of the video, um, and I think this is really the first time we've done like a full video with him. Um, so very excited about that, and um, excited about how incredible he has become at his his art his craft um but uh the gist of it is the video uh takes you through seven stages of love um beginning on april 1st and ending on april Bam. 7th um so you will you will see the journey the the ups and the and the downs of that um and hopefully people can relate to that um not even in uh, like any kind of a relationship but just in 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 life i think it kind of just takes you through the ups and the downs and um you will you will see how it ends we're just really lucky to have him in our corner and and for him to be as excited and as ambitious as we are still is really really incredible so very very excited for him and for for people to see what we've kind of come up with together yeah. And like not knocking, he's one of the most talented people I've ever met in my life. Every like, and he's got like this eye that if there's a picture or a, a video element, you can kind of be like, Oh, that's Lupe. I bet. And it's always there. The only issue he's such a dick. And <laughs> he's just like, for those of you who don't know him, he just, he, he demands his own bus on every tour. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, he has his own writer, his own dressing room. And if you look at most of his pictures, you're not allowed to make eye contact with his lens. <laughs> Because he thinks, no, he's the nicest guy in the world. Well, I'm excited to see it, guys. And I really, really, really appreciate you letting me do this. It's a, uh, the song itself is amazing. Sticky is incredible. And it's a, in my opinion, and I'd like to get your opinion before we sign off here. It's a great start of an indication of the record. I think there's a lot more to explore and there's a lot more corners that you guys hit. And it's just through and through 
it's a fucking great record and it's i'm so excited about it that i'm not going to say it's top for me but it's 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 getting there it's all i've been listening to so the recency bias might be hitting me in the head a little bit but <laughs> very good oh yeah oh thank yeah, you thank you i yeah, think I'm, i think sticky is a good representation of uh the the i don't know i think there's and i've said it a couple times i think for me and and my two cents however many cents that's worth uh i think it's a healthy balance of nostalgia and um sort of the ambition that we we were talking about and so, and i think the ambition is is it, it there's a lot of stock in the idea that we produced it ourselves and i think that that's just risky you know especially at this point when we could easily have paid somebody else an exorbitant amount of money to to help produce and, and shape the record i think you know it, it, it's very clear that like um you have to bet on yourselves you know i think the biggest change comes uh at least the biggest changes have happened for our band when we have bet on ourselves you know getting a, away from a major label and um you know recording to tape and uh you know taking a chance on colby and him taking a chance on us and then working together you know however many times after i think Hopefully Sticky's a good representation and and like a familiar kind of feeling. Um, hopefully in a new way, but also in a comforting like, oh, this is like why I enjoy the main. And then like yep. you said, hopefully people will start to sort of peel back the layers and, and realize that um, there's more depth and there is more, uh, like you're saying, there's, there's a little bit of something in every sort of corner that you, you, you can kind of discover, so. It's a, a truly like it's greatest hits past, present, future. Like it just feels it could have like I was listening to it. And I was like, this could be like a self-titled record in that it, it kind of this is the main kind of field. You know what I mean? And that's that's a very that's very high praise. And I mean that very earnestly. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, here here is the new video for April 7th. Hope you dig it. <laughs> 